funny thing was I, I had parole in Sydney because I breached my parole. Right. So if, if people don't know, when you breach your parole, minimum sentence is three months. So I knew I had to come back. I was I got arrested for the last bank robbery, 2003. My release date was 2010 if I was good. I did a uni degree in there. I studied a lot, computers, business. Yep. I sort of updated my skills, even though I'd done a, those a couple of times in there. There was different elements of business. And I just basically went out and wrote, hey, I'm, I'm in custody. I want to get on with my life. Um, can you come get me when my sentence finishes? So I get to the gate of this prison down in Victoria and I'm about to walk out and I say, oh, so is, is the truck here to take me to New South Wales? And he goes, what truck? I said, is New South Wales Corrections here or something or the police? He goes, what for? Yeah, so I say, I've got warrants up there. And for, yeah, the officer looks at me dumbfounded. He's saying, what are you talking about, mate? And I, to me, I'm like, mate, I've put in a request to be taken from custody today up to New South Wales and allow me to serve the remaining parole that I owe up there from now and move on with my life. Mate, I don't know, don't know what you're talking about get out the gate and kick me out. Yeah. And I walked out and I was hoping they were standing at the front. There was no one there. So I had to come back up and hand myself in. Oh, dead set. And, Fuck, uh, bro. That would have been terrible. So you, you get out. So wait, you get out. You've got this free. big smile. You see the fresh air and you're like, oh, I can't wait to fucking drive to Sydney to go back in again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro. Yeah. What a fucking smack so in the face. Was, um, and then I rang Parramatta oh. Police because I was- uh, I feel bad here in this story, out, bro. Uh, had an apartment out there at the yeah. time and, um, and we'd invested it and- Mate, I was sitting there and I was going, I rang him and he's, I remember the sergeant saying, mate, um, enjoy some family time coming at the end of the week. And he said, oh, don't stress, mate. There's no one's looking for you. He goes, if you drive a car and they pull you over, it will come up. Yeah. My suggestion, don't drive a car if you want to stay out for the week. I'll be in on Friday or something like that. It was, might have been a couple of days. Um, Give me a ring when I'm back and we'll organise it. And I, so I rang him up. He said, yeah, come in and. Mate, they treated me respectfully and went back into custody. So was it another um, three months after that? Oh, I went, went I mean, back in. And the difference between Victorian and, and New South Wales system was immense. Yeah. I went in there and as soon as I got there, it was just like there is tension. There is, you know, everyone's ready to just jump off. Was this Silverwater um, or? MRRC, Silverwater. Um, I get taken across. So I think I landed and I might have spent, I don't know, a week in the remand centre and they moved me straight across because I only had the three months to serve. If I played up. Did you get longer. your one week break before you went back in? Yeah. I had, <laughs> oh man, that was killer. That would have been eh? a good fucking week, oh, eh? Man. It's a, it was a real oxymoron of a week. Oh, yeah, bro. Like, I, know, how good, how bad, I how, know. How, but yeah. it's like, at least, it, like, is it better to have a fucking week than to just go straight in? Like, you know. I always say you can never replicate <coughs> being freed from jail and the feeling that you get from that. But it's the same again. Like, I look back on that and that, all that too. That's, um, yeah, you get out and you're given a, I don't know what it was, three, four hundred dollar check. And that's like, see you later, brother. <laughs> Best wishes. And, yeah. And they talk about setting you up for life. And I think um, you don't have to do the courses when you're in there. They're not compulsory. And sometimes if you, say as a bank robber, had to do anger management, yeah. um, violence prevention and conflict resolution, otherwise you won't get parole on that first date. Right. Yeah. So. Um, Didn't know they had a bank robber specific fucking nah, curriculum. <laughs> oh, it's more like those that have done violent crimes. And I was at right. um, what they call an E2 uh, Did you consider yourself, you, I, I, I don't think you'd consider yourself a particularly violent person at that point. You just happened oh. to be like, how bad was it? There's right. worse. As I said, there was the violent person from my father's side right. and then there was the peaceful version. So I'd rather like knife. I don't have to prove anything to anybody. Yeah. And, but I was always... Um, if I went to that level, I would have went to the end. Was that, that was it, my mentality. But was that your mentality in jails or during the robberies? Everywhere. Right. Yeah, all out. Like right. All in, remember? Yeah, you know? yeah. You're not wrong. And, um, I can feel that. And I, you, you would have felt that if you were in that zone of us doing something or us even in jail when things went off. Yep. Riots down at Redfern, I would have been the first person up the front and not not a fear in the world. 